<laughs> I would say that the sword system doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because I can carry lots of things that are of various sizes. I don't understand why seeds continue to be so big. They're plant seeds. They, they shouldn't take four spaces. Magical game inventory logic. Very true. And my, yeah, my, my, uh, my warm mask, headpiece, whatever, also taking four. When it's it's a head mask, it's you could literally just fit it in a pocket. It's not big. All right, we're back. Whoops, just, just slam something down in the back. Okay, do I have everything I want? Let's actually grab a battery. Well, let's take that and that. Um, I have food. Let me grab a cup of waters just in case. And then I don't need either of those. I have plenty of them. Uh, headlamp. Okay. Here we go. We are equipped with a freaking torpedo launcher. So. Oh, look, I, I got the glitch again. It thinks I'm walking. For the bubble. From the bubble. We follow the green plants on the wall until we find the habitat. And from the habitat, we just go down. We continue to go down. So good. Wait, that's the kind of horde. I'm looking for the birthing room. best not to get nommed. I'm equipped with rocket launchers. I mean, torpedo launchers. I don't have any ammunition! Ah-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha! Well... Can't believe it. I had to craft my own ammunition. What kind of game is this? Lol. Oh, well, we'll be fine.
I mean, at least this time we won't get lost, so we shouldn't be chomped too much. Wait. Oh, I can just take it out if I wanted to. Remove the arm. Look, didn't even get numbed. It's all good. Here we are. said your people came here in search of a cure? I was a researcher. You were a scientist? Like me? My people regarded my scientific contributions with particular interest. As I said, like me. If that is your interpretation. So how did your valuable scientific mind wind up infected? Not my mind, my body. Perhaps you should build the next component. So, do you not have legs? in my own urine. So you came here to search for a cure? I left the mission. Does that mean the bacteria got out on your watch? This subject is uncomfortable. If you would like to know more, I will ask that you first construct the final component. Mm. You're being very cagey about the topic. This is the last piece. Soon I will be autonomous again. What will you do with your newfound freedom? I must return home to make amends. Amends? For the bacteria? There seems to be a lot you're not telling me. It is hard for me to find the words. I must collect my thoughts. We have all the necessary components. You may initiate body fabrication sequence from the time. You still owe me an explanation. I understand. So tell it to me now before you're out of my body. All right, here we go. Commencing storage in Indian fabrication. The escape of the bacteria was an accident. I thought my solution was foolproof. I was wrong. Did you cause the accident? Yes. Oh. I do not wish to speak about it. We can come back to this. What are you doing? Research. Tit for tat. You've probed my mind. I scan your body. Architect body. The complete physical architect vessel is a biotechnological and cybernetic hybrid, incorporating design elements from more than 20 DNA sources. Skin. The outer layer of tissue has the consistency of leather. Leather. The tissue is interlaced with channels of visibly glowing energy, powered by the alien's internal bio biotechnological heart. Robotic arms. Alan has six articulated arms that are suspended around his body by magnetic levitation. These arms contain independent high-speed computing systems and are capable of performing tasks independently. Limbs. The organic arms are considered 
secondary to the inorganic robotic arms. These are used for mundane tasks that don't require much fine motor movement. The bottom half of the arms are covered in a bios biocomposite plating. The plating might serve as a form of armor. It also appears to store latent energy buildups like, pa like, build like capacitors. Mobility. The hooved legs are reminiscent of several species of mountain goats. The hooves are covered in microscopic hooks that aid in exploring rough and uneven terrain. The forelegs and the hindlings are oddly close together, which explains why walking might be a secondary mode of movement for this architect form. Teleportation. The architect body is able to teleport or blink short distances. The method is likely a scaled down version of the teleportation gates, but the methodology is not well understood. It is likely that the architect's body is able to provide the massive amount of power necessary for this function. Matching DNA fragments appear to be derived from the following sources. Chromium bore of Calt Caltwell Prime, an invasive species known for their extremely tough skin, which makes them hard to eradicate. Putty Serpent of Ap oh my gosh. Putty Serpent of Apos Guitar. This snake has extremely tensile skin. Prevents it from tearing and allows it to compress itself into small spaces. Electrode eel of Lith Liston generates an, elec an electric. Oh my gosh! Generates an electrically charged slime across its length. Astral rays moves a Mardon 14. These rays have small organs that generate and store electricity. Shaggy goats of Olympian. These Herbert. Um, these herbivorous creatures live on the rocky foothills of the mountain planet Olympian and are excellent climbers. Giant geckos of Holtz asteroid. Massive geckos that emit electrostatic charge on its footpaths. This creature is a ch this creates a charge difference in the surface of the gecko is climbing. The markers of at least a dozen other biological species are present but unrecognized at this time. Uh, I'm stuck. Okay. Okay. Come on, right, Robin. Nice. Commencing days of Chester. Did it work? Are we... It has been some time since I last stretched out in so many dimensions. Like waking from a dream. some remnants. Would you like your memories of me removed as well? Are you kidding? No way. You still owe me the end of your story. I told you I must return home to assess, repair, make amends. Tell me more. When the bacteria escaped, it was my fault. I disobeyed the directive from my network. Oh, no. Whoa. We noticed that a species of Leviathan young produced an enzyme that is efficient against the bacteria. I thought if we incubated sea dragon eggs, we might expedite their hatching. I was not wrong. But... It would appear that sea dragon parents are stronger and more motivated than our facility was rated to handle. Then the bacteria got out, infecting everything. How many survived the outbreak back home? Are they still waiting for someone to bring back a cure? I do not know. Can I help? The fact that I withheld this information does not concern you. It was certainly manipulative. But I've also made my own share of mistakes. I'm still committed to helping. I accept your help. 
Find me at the gate when you are ready. In the meantime, I must prepare. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Well. There we go. I'll be honest, it's a very cool design. I don't like that it flashes when he talks. I think that is silly. Please, I will join you in the gate base when everything is ready. But for now, I have much to prepare. Gate's gate facility. Hmm. All right. Guess we're not done yet. I mean, if he likes it, that's fine. But I don't like it as a, as a like a, a character design. Especially the whole body. That's like kind of distracting. I mean, maybe that's how they choose to communicate through like body pulses. Are you serious? Wait, this is the wrong side. Teleport me out. Okay. close to landing and we missed it. I just now noticed that we're cold down here. Which I think is kind of silly. It would been, this entire game, the surface water has been warmer, like enough for our body, which again, makes no sense. But lower down, apparently it gets colder, which is not how I understand planets to work. I guess there's, I mean, there's less heat from the sunlight, but there's also, you know, heat from the planet itself. I mean, and this planet is definitely geothermal. You've seen that all over the place. But I don't know. I don't know how good my understanding of, uh, what is it, geology? Into this geology is.
Yeah. I mean, I, I can also understand why they didn't. I mean, if 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 they made the water be just as freezing as the air above, it would have made starting the game much more of a challenge. I mean, unre I mean, it's it, yeah, the temperature is unrealistic in this game. The way that water warms you and just walking into a cave warms you. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Damn it, we were doing pretty good. Now I'm lost. Wait, no, it's this way. Yeah, here we are. Wow, I found this in record time. again. As far as I can tell, I am free to go straight towards um, the gate.
I'm curious to see if this is actually the end of the game or if we will need to kind of like, you know, make anything else, do any more exploration or crafting. Also, obviously, I went over stream <laughs> as it's been almost seven hours. Hey, here we are. Are you preparing to leave, Alan? Yes. There is much to do. Whoa, whoa. I mean, I know we could teleport around, but that just looks cool. with me beyond this teleport there is no turning back are you kidding i can't pass up a chance to see where architects come from besides i don't have another ride i do not know what we will find there the others may be sick or angry if they live at all or you could find peace family i hope you are right please complete any business you still have on this planet Join me on the other side when you are ready to leave. I... I don't think I have any other business. I mean, I found out what happened to Sam. I got the truth. I stopped... the Kara. I don't, I don't think Margaret even wants to talk to me anymore, so, um, yeah, I think I'm ready to go. Ooh, 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 ooh. This doesn't look great. Robin, you're just in time. The phase gate is opening. You've been hiding a phase gate here this whole time. Wow. Only for the last millennium. It will lead us home. No wonder you hid yourself from Altera. It Whoa. was imperative to keep the home world safe. In hopes that the others survived. Yeah. I get cool robot arms. Woo. Ooh. 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 
what use the feedback menu give report why would I why would I okay I don't I don't know them <laughs> what those arms do um okay let's 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 do robot arm things I, I oh wow Robin, don't kill yourself. <laughs> I love gameplay that is basically just cutscenes. Wait, why am I floating? <laughs> Robin, please. Me and I will initiate ship assembly. Okay, okay. Show me cool animated stuff. Thank you. The masks are in place. The energy field is ready. There is no time to lose. Yeah, I walked up here now to walk all the way down. Oh, wait. Should I be down here? Join me, Robin. Okay. Ooh, I'm going to another alien planet. <laughs> I apologize. The levitator was calibrated for heavier bodies. I would have helped you to your feet, but as you can see, I have been fully integrated with the ship. Is this permanent? Nothing is permanent. Are you ready to go? Yes. I found the answers I was looking for. I'm ready to move on. I can't bring Sam back. But I know she died fighting, and I got to finish her work. I'll always carry her memory. Good. Please brace yourself, and then we will depart. Launching in three, two, one. Find when we get there. If I am the last of my kind, I will experience the sorrow of ten thousand souls dimly. There's some head fingers in chat. <laughs> Yay, we finished it. All right. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so... Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, no, I did not release the fish in my tank. They are stuck there until someone finds them. <laughs> Marguerite will save them. <laughs> Why is white square blocked? <laughs> um. <laughs> so... I enjoyed the game, but I will say, I think Subnautica was much better. In terms of story, Below Zero had a lot more to work with because it had like extra characters. It had Alan, it had Marguerite. Um, but I feel like Subnautica did a much better job with the whole exploration and discovering the story if it, it did better with using it, it's you 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 find information you figure out what you need to craft you go find the materials you craft what you need and you move on below zero had that but not to the extent subnautica did and it, it, below zero just felt smaller it honestly it felt like a glorified dlc for subnautica it used many of the same you know components the same creatures the same like building my base wasn't as exciting because it was just the same as it was before there wasn't a whole lot different it wasn't like i had to find new materials i just i knew what i was looking for and maybe that's part of the reason why it feels like a dlc is because it just pulled so much from the original game. But I think what I liked one what I liked most about the original Subnautica game was you had to discover the story mostly through either the logs or just exploring the world. Below Zero had a lot more NPCs just telling you where to go. And that doesn't make for a great... It, ma it makes for a great story, maybe, but it does not make for a great game. Um, I liked some of the new creatures. I liked some of the new environments. I think the temperature could have been handled a little bit differently. But I had a lot of fun with it. It was, it was nice to play another Subnautica game. Um, the, the spy penguin wasn't really all that chalked up. It, like, it felt like it was going to be like some super important component to the, into the full, to the game, but it was only needed for like two things. In fact, I think the, the penguin, the spy penguin had like a measure for like how close you got with it. You like, you build up a relationship with it. Like they expected you to use it a lot. And that didn't happen. Um, so yeah, I I think it was it was a fun game. I enjoyed it, but I think it definitely didn't live up to the original game. And again, I think that's it, part of in most in part of it is just because I played Subnautica and I had an idea of what I was going to do in the game. I feel like I was a, a lot more methodical about how I approached Sub-Zero or Below Zero than I was in the original game, but yeah. And also, like I said, I miss, I miss the Cyclops. I miss the Sea Moth. I wasn't a huge fan of the Sea Truck. I thought it was cool. Um, but I didn't really get into it. And also, I, I think another thing is with the way that the story played out with you being told where to go and what to do, having those specific objectives, there wasn't a whole lot of incentive to just mess around. Um, there were a number of habitat items I never crafted like, I never even got... Like, I thought about making the nuclear reactor. Never felt like I needed it. 
Um, there are a number of modules for the seat track I never felt like I needed to craft. I mean, I could have if I felt like I really wanted to, but I don't know. It didn't feel like it was necessary to the story or that it would benefit me in any way. It didn't feel like it fit in with the gameplay. Unless, I mean, maybe that maybe maybe that's personal to me. I, I just approached the game in a different way rather than, you know, coming into it being like, I just want to explore the world environment. And, you know, make whatever I want to make. But I... Yeah, I, I think I've I wasn't I didn't feel like I needed to start crafting more things. Another thing that I realized is and I, I mentioned this before is that the map is a lot smaller than the original Subnautica game. I cra so in in Subnautica, I crafted two full bases and like somewhere around four different outposts. I cl I cra in Blow Zero, I crafted one base and that's all I needed. Uh, when we went down into like the really deep area, I considered making a new base, but it, it didn't become relevant. Um, it it I didn't feel like I needed to. I I could have, but there was no real point. So, and again, again, maybe that's just because of how I approached the game. I knew what I was doing, so I didn't feel like I needed to make an entirely new base to like stop at when I needed to. Um, I think in the original Subnautica game, I crafted like two different prawns for specific situations. I actually remember in the original Subnautica game, how excited I was to build the Cyclops and then use the Cyclops to transfer all the materials I needed to build an entirely new base in the, um, the volcanic area. It, uh, from what I remember from Subnautica, there were like three, f three ish, three major underground areas. This one had one and it just like, it just kept going down. Like and if I remember correctly, the max depth of the prawn suit is 1,300 meters. Uh, this prawn suit only made it to 11. I may be remembering wrong, but I just I feel like the game itself went a lot deeper than this did. But yeah, like I said, sub zero or sub zero below zero felt very here's a story follow it do what you're told whereas the original game felt more open world explore the game and that's what i would have wanted more of from below zero i mean i'm not i'm not again i'm not saying i hated this it, it was really good i enjoyed it um i I actually felt a lot from the conversations between uh, Robin and Alan. I thought those were like great little things, tidbits to think about as to what makes a human, how we rely on our memory, on our shared existence with each other. Whereas Alan is very memory is something we never lose. We always have it. And there's like this foil between the two of them. Which actually makes me think about what is going to happen to Robin. Like, assuming the architect survived, she is probably just as capable of becoming one of them by a transfer of her her knowledge, her experiences into a new body. She may be the first human to ever go through that process. Actually, I think I have a, a bit of an issue with that as too as a story. Is you came here for Sam, and suddenly you're also strapped onto this architect story. It's there's like two stories running parallel that kind of interconnect, but don't really. Because like if you think about it, it's like Alan was like, 
okay, I have my body now. I'm going to go. If you have anything left to do, you do it. And then at the end, Alan's like, did you finish everything you do? And Sam and, and Robin is like, yeah, I managed to like, you know, discover everything about Sam or whatever. It's like, it didn't feel like Alan cared about Sam, about Robin's discovery of Sam's story. I know that he had dialogue around those incidences when they happened, but it didn't really feel like Alan and Sam or Robin super bonded that much. Um, I don't know. A again, it's just the world was approached. Uh, the world creation was approached a little bit differently and the story was approached differently than Subnautica. It really just felt like here, we're going to take all the mechanics from Subnautica and we're going to apply them to a story. That's just how I felt about it. But it's still, it was still a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I did, I did get to do the exploration and the crafting and the building that I, that I loved about Subnautica, just not to the extent. But overall, good game. I'm glad I got to play it at last. Um, I'll be uploading it to YouTube. So catch it there if you haven't, if you want to, you know, if you missed any of it. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. No stream tomorrow. My favorite creature is the water doggy. Oh, oh, that reminds me. The snow dog in their fur. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, that actually, that actually brings up a couple things. Um, first off, I made it through the, the, um, the giant worm area without ever getting a real good look at the worms. And also completely without a snow fox. I just walked it. Also, I didn't know it was there. I just assumed something was going to be there. So I just walked it. <laughs> there was no real, like, push towards doing anything there. The snow fox, like, never became a thing. Like, I, I made it at the end just kind of for fun. Um, <laughs> and also, the snow dog fur I had no idea how to get it like I chat had to tell me how to get it because the game doesn't imply really tell you how to get the fur I thought the game hinted at it with the fruit that other animals can't eat but that apparently wasn't it also killing them and trying to like just cut their fur off apparently is not a viable strategy either i think the only hint the game the only hint the game gives is some log about how the spy pangolin is not attacked by other creatures and that's it the fruit does work on the snow dogs but it doesn't help you get their fur at all how does it work on the snow dogs How was I supposed to get them to eat it? Also, oh, that's insane. Part of me wonders is part part of okay. So part of me wonders for the ice worms is if the snow fox was intended to make it more challenging. Like, do they suggest? Do, do they hint that you should use the snow fox to get through this area? But by doing so, you are making more noise. I couldn't tell. I mean, for the ice worm area, I, I just walked along the sides of the area, which made it fairly easy to avoid the worms when they popped out because there was a collision, usually. And they didn't do all that much damage. Um, so I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to see the worms in their full glory, but at the same time, I outsmarted them, I guess, or outsmarted the game. So another thing I also wanted to talk about was Marguerite, who I feel like they put into the story as just like fan service for fans of the first game. 
despite the fact that it makes no sense. I mean, they, they went through the effort. Um, they went through the effort of giving her a, an explanation of how she got to this area and how she survived the Reaper Leviathan as in she killed it and floated her way here, which is insane. Um, but that never explained how she survived the Kara. Like, never. Uh, she was supposed to have died. I mean, I guess they needed a character who knew the area. I don't know. Her inclusion felt fun and fan servicey, but the more I think about it, the less it makes sense. I mean, it very well, it very well could have been a survivor of the Altair team. Actually, the Altera team. What happened to them in the end? Was it just Sam went and exploded the cave and Altera was just like, okay, this is a failed experiment. We're done. We're out of here. Because I feel like it's weird that they just gave up on that research so quickly. Like, what happened to everyone? I don't know. I guess I missed... Maybe I missed some lore. The stalker should have crawled towards you when holding the fruit. Not sure why it didn't really work. Okay. Maybe because it was already mad at me and I wasn't holding the fruit. I do know they actually ripped the entire story out and rewrote it entirely after the initial alpha. So I wonder if that's why there seemed to be so many depth disparate blah, threads. I don't know. I guess the more I think about the story, yeah, there's there's things that I guess weren't really answered. And again, it really feels like there are two separate stories happening at the same time that they tried to connect in parallel, but didn't. So, actually, to, 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 to go on to that point, uh, Lillian who first discovered Alan's signal and then Alan decided she wasn't right because she was Alteran. That was actually the closest we got from the two stories coming together. But in fact, it wasn't. It was just, here's Sam's story, and then someone in Sam's story is making a reference to Alan's story. And that's kind of all we got. If anything, it's just Sam's story was a reason to bring Robin here, who then stumbled into Alan's storyline. Which is interesting, I guess. Because like, like, if you think back to your original game, the entire storyline is the Kara. The Kara is what is causing the planet to be in lockdown, in quarantine, which is the reason why... Um, the Aurora was shot down. You are getting sick. You need to find the cure. And you need to find the cure for two reasons. To survive and to get off the planet. Like, it's it's one cohesive storyline. And you get very little information about it. You have to discover all that yourself. Here we had two storylines happening in tandem with people just telling us what's going on. The original storyline was actually you playing Sam. Huh. I'm curious as to how that would have worked out. It might have actually been better. Anyways, maybe that's, I know, th those, those are my thoughts on the game. But yeah, overall, I did, I did enjoy it. I was, I'm glad I played it. I do, I do miss the original Subnautica experience, but I don't think I can ever get that. It's kind of like Outer Wilds. Just once you played it, you you can't play it again. All the, all the discovery is lost. But yeah. All right. That wraps it up for Subnautica Below Zero. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts if you have them. Um... Join my Discord if you feel like sharing. And of course, like I said, these will be up on 
YouTube, so check them out there if you want to watch them again or miss anything. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye.